What's up, guys? My name is Gustavo David Ortiz. Uh, I just finished doing a really great workshop slash mastermind with a, a great colleague of mine. Her name is Kate Miner. Uh, we did attempt to do a Facebook Live at the same time as doing this, uh, you know, this this sort of live event. We ran into a lot of technical problems. Uh, I'm really trying to find a way to make my live events also online, and I'm running into a lot of a lot of issues, a lot of just technical issues. So uh, I'm gonna keep trying, see if I can figure that out. But we had a really great session yesterday. We were talking about lead uh, lead generation machine, lead generating machines, and what that means. So um, because the information was so uh, juicy. I really, I, I, it was important for me that we uh, we share this. And uh, Kate is not necessarily available right now. She was generous with her time yesterday, and I don't, I didn't want to take her away for another one. So I'm just going to share sort of the uh, the the short version of some of the really great stuff that that came about for that meeting. Now, I will say, if you ever get a chance to join us on the live meetings, uh, like like in person meetings, I would highly recommend attending primarily because you know uh, there's stuff that obviously I'm sharing the the other speaker may be sharing but there's a lot of really great information that's coming from the people that are at the meeting um, you know some feedback they may have or area of expertise they may have or some insight that they may have that uh, we just are not able to include it as part of this type of format and of course uh, the networking that happens during that time is I think really really valuable there's some time in the beginning and a little bit of time at the end where everyone kind of gets a chance to chat and, and talk and really get to know each other each other's business and figure out how you know we can help each other as business owners, um, you know, be better at our business. So um, Kate Miner is a uh, MAPS business coach. So if you are looking for someone to help you kind of take your business to the next level, she is definitely a great resource for you to contact. So definitely go ahead and reach out to her or reach out to me and I'm happy to get you guys connected. I myself, I am a commercial real estate entrepreneur. I do some business consulting, um, but my really my jam is, uh, you know, commercial real estate entrepreneurship. So I, I really help people with any kind of commercial real estate need. Um, that being said, I want to get into the meat and potatoes of this, uh, I guess, this presentation. So lead generating machine. So um, identifying your lead generating, generating machine is going to be really critical for you to really be able to build a business. Now, a lot of people think about uh, lead generating as new business, uh, right? Like how many people can, can, can you build into your pipeline? And I think that's super important. And I, I'm gonna get into some uh, variety of how to look at leads, but the very first thing before you even think about going to find what machine you're gonna be using is really identifying your avatar. So, um, you know, defining who, you know, who your, uh, ideal client is. What does that mean? Who are they? What do they, you know, what kinds of things do they do? And then you have to ask a ton of questions. So these are just sort of a handful of, uh, of questions. I, I was able to sort of scrape a handful of questions that uh, Kate brought to the table that I think are really great questions to ask when trying to understand who your ideal client is. And, and these are going to be things that are going to start out with, you know, like what's their, their gender, their age, their income level, what kind of hobbies they're into, whether they're married or not, their occupation, where they live, you know, what kind of cultural backgrounds they have. And, you know, who, who if there's a, if there are a couple, like who is, um, who is the main decision maker or who is the influencer for making decisions, those kinds of things, right? So those are not obviously the only questions. There are another of other questions like where they hang out, who they hang out with, what are their goals? Now, the reason why you really want to understand all these sort of intimate details of your avatar. Now, this is not a real person. This is a fake person that would be ideal for your business. And the reason why you want to get into the nitty gritty details is because there are certain people that you really want to do business with because you know you offer a product or service that appeals to a specific kind of person with a specific kind of need that has specific activities that they're engaged with. Now, um, you know, you also know that there are going to be people that are window shoppers or that are just not an ideal 
um, client for you or customer for you, they're tire kickers. And, um, you know, everyone is going to be a little bit of that for different products or services. So you want to identify what type of person is going to be ideal for your business. What you don't want is you don't want to make a product. And this is a really obvious one, right? You don't want to make a product for children, right? A product for children and then focus your attention on, you know, any, everyone that's 55 plus if they're not the ones who are going to be buying it, right? For, for children. So it's important that you identify who those people are, what they are, the, the intimate details are gonna be really, really critical. Um, you know, uh, I think that if you're able to identify the, the exact person, like this sort of fake person, let's, let's make an assumption, you know, 42 year old person, male, uh, athletic, who likes chocolate and uh, does kayaking on the weekends, who enjoys traveling and is a uh, is a doctor, right? Let's say that's the that's sort of the ideal client that you're looking for. Well, if that's the ideal client that you're looking for, I want you to think about all the different marketing components that are going to be associated with that that type of person. And, and I'm not saying that even though when you go to create your avatar, that that's the only person you're marketing to. But what it does is that let's say, for example, you have a client or you run in your, your, your marketing to people and they check, let's say you have 10 markers and they check nine of those 10 markers. Well, you know that they're probably a really good fit for your business. However, if you're talking to people or you're marketing to people and they're only checking two or three boxes of the 10 boxes that you have, then that's not going to be a really strong lead for you. So identifying who your ideal person is, is going to be really helpful in, in figuring out, you know, not only what to say, but where to say it. So, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of lead generating techniques and avenues that, that you can go, uh, go with. And, and if you know um, the, the, I guess the, the nuances of where your client is and you know what kinds of things that they do, you know that you can create marketing materials to access them, right? If you know that they're going to restaurants all the time, then maybe partnering with restaurants may be a benefit for you. Right, that may be a, a strategy that you might want to follow. If you know that they are um, on a particular application, right, then maybe trying to find a way to advertise on that application, maybe uh, or 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 communicate with them on that application. Maybe that's the way to do it, right? So um, really understanding who your market is, uh, or specifically who your avatar is, will help identify who your market is. And then you can explore slightly outside of that to experiment, but you know you're staying, you're kind of creating a foundation so, so that you're always staying within a relative easy distance to your market. You know, like even if you're, you're stepping out of, of bounds on the age, well, the other eight or nine markers are still checked off. So even though you're going off and you're trying a little bit younger, or a little bit older, you you know that the 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 other the other eight markers are still in in place. You're still advertising or marketing or doing any kind of lead gen activity to the other eight markers that are there. So um, I would highly recommend before you start putting together any kind of marketing campaign, before you start putting together or spending money on advertising dollars, that you that you put together an avatar, and this is going to be essentially your ideal. Uh, your ideal client, right? The person that would be most likely to immediately walk into your store or go onto your online website or whatever and immediately see value and immediately want to purchase something because they see um, that, that, that what you have is exactly for them. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Um, I, Kate had some really great other tidbits to add that I don't remember. Um, but again, we're going to try to put this uh, this, these live, uh, these uh, in-person events online, and we're going to keep working at that. But I would recommend for you guys to come out because while I can definitely see us uh, being able to get successful to put this online, I'm pretty confident that you're going to get more out of coming in person uh, whenever, you know, whenever you do. And of course, obviously, you know, so I know some of you guys are very nervous about COVID and have, you know, uh, other concerns. So that's totally cool. Just want to let you know that we do have in-person as well as an attempt to, to kind of put this live. All right. So, 
Let's get tactical. We talked about um, uh, creating a. Um, we talked about creating a an avatar and the that, so that you know who your market is, right? You you can identify. You've identified with absolute clarity who your market is. Now, what do you do to access them, right? So this is a chess game, right? And all of the tactics that we're going to kind of chat about, this, the, these aren't all of them, but these are tactics that um, I'm seeing business owners use now more than ever. Um, I'm using them myself. I've, I've made some shifts in my own uh, marketing uh, activities um, based on what's happening with COVID and people being online more often and all that other good stuff, okay? So uh, all of these tactics that I'm going to share with you you don't have to implement all of them. It'd be great if you can, but don't, don't feel like you have to implement every single one of them. Pick two, maybe three, and just focus on those, right? If you, if you want to simplify it even more, pick one really good one and just kind of blow that one out the, out the park, right? Just really focus on making that one like, hey, I'm going to make this awesome. And then once you create it, you, you probably create a good system to follow, then go ahead and explore a second one or a third one. And you know that that's the way that I would approach it. I know sometimes when when you see all these kind of things flying at you, you're like, oh, well, which one do I do? Um, I, I would say that figure out what is going to be uh, a, like prioritize what is going to give you the most return for the least amount of time and money that you got to put into it. That's the way that I would start, and that way you know that um, you're testing all the things that have the highest. Uh, return on investment um, that you can before you start exploring other options. Okay. All right. So let's, let's kind of get into it. So, um, you know, we talked earlier about leads uh, being new business, but I have a little bit of a, of a, of a different uh, take on that. For me, a lead is not new business. A lead is anyone who raises their hand and says, hey, I need to utilize your service. Now that may be new business. It's oft oftentimes it is, but oftentimes it is someone that you already have done business with and they are now wanting to do business with you again. Now I, I bring that up because there are a couple of things that I, I really need you guys to, to understand and, and, and like why it matters that business, like building relationships makes a difference. And this should be a, an absolute focus. Now, again, I'm not against, or, uh, uh, you know, um, um, I'm not against uh, bringing in new business, but leveraging existing, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, retention is very powerful. And this is why when you look at new versus existing customers, okay, the, you know, acquiring, uh, and I'll read it right here, acquiring a new customer can cost five times more than retaining an existing customer. So for, you know, for every $5 that you spend on, on getting a new customer, you can essentially, you know, be working on five uh, customers to retain that you already have. Right. So, you know, you, 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 you the, the, the cost on that is much lower. What's even more impressive is the conversion rate. So when you look at the success rate of selling uh, a widget or service to an existing customer, your success rate is about 60 to 70 percent versus five to 20 percent on new customers. So I want you to really think about the math on that. Right. If you spent you can spend five dollars and get someone who's going to convert at five to 20 percent. Okay, five dollars, and you get five to twenty percent conversion, or you can spend one dollar and get sixty to seventy percent conversion. That's essentially what this is. This math is saying. So clearly, the most cost-effective way to uh, to uh, manage your business and manage your leads is to really focus heavily on retention. So. I'm not saying not to generate new business, that's obviously important, but retention has so much more value because of the, uh, the ability for you to have return business on, on that value. And that doesn't even take into consideration, I want you to understand this, this does not take into consideration any referral business that you may get from that. So if you're able to, re to retain a customer and do business with them mul multiple times, they're more likely to refer you business, to, to say good things about you, to tell their friends and family to go utilize your service or buy your widgets or, you know, experience whatever experience that you have. 
Okay, so these are all like sort of secondary and tertiary elements. They're not even included in these numbers, which is, which is, I mean, this is a really great thing to think about. So that is all kind of getting back to where, where retention is, right? By increasing your customer retention by just 5%, you essentially can uh, increase your profits by anywhere from 25 to 75%. That's conservatively. So, I mean, retention is powerful stuff. Right. So, you know, I know a lot of folks really focus on building new business. I, I want you to think about the amounts of money, the gobs and gobs of, 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 of gold that's sitting in the database that, that already exists for you. Now, some people are like, well, I mean, I, there's no way I can keep up with that. There's, there's a lot of people. I, I do a lot of transactions per day, so on and so forth. I get it. So if that's the case for you, if you have a high volume of transactions, honestly, even if you have a low volume, um, I have a relatively low volume of transactions, but they're high ticket items, right? Um, utilizing a CRM is going to be super valuable for you. So having a CRM to manage your business, please, I, I hope that you have one. If you don't have one, you need to find one ASAP, immediately. It's going to make a world of difference for your day-to-day -day and for your ability to expand as a business, okay? All right, so, um, so we talked about retention. So I'm gonna go basically from retention side uh, all the way over to the new acquisition side. So in the, on the retention side, and I, honestly on, on, the, on the new customer service side too, uh, or rather the new customer side too, uh, the customer experience, it dominates by far, right? It dominates. And, and the reason why it dominates is because um, as I mentioned, re retention is, is king. You're going to make a ton of money by focusing uh, a, you know, a good part of your marketing efforts towards retention. Um, the other thing is, is that by creating a, a, an amazing customer experience, you're, you're more likely to keep those customers over time. You're also more likely to get good reviews and positive feedback from those customers over time. And they're more likely to refer you, right? So part of that is building uh, and increasing trust with your customers. So first you create a good customer experience. So as they go to buy a widget or, or, or utilize your service, make sure that that's a very seamless process, that you're very supportive in that process, that you're helping them through that. And then you know, after, even after you do business with them, make sure you use that time to build some trust and so to, to, to increase the amount of trust that you have with them. So that way they, they feel confident being able to share their experience with their friends and family and bring them over to, you know, essentially do business with you as well. I mean, remember, every time you, 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 you do business one, with one person, you have the potential to access their entire uh, sphere of influence. So, you know, you're not just doing business with that one person, you're doing business with that one person and you're setting, you're, you're sowing the seeds so that they will share with their sphere of influence, their experience, and then they'll share that and, and, and ultimately get you more business by virtue of their, 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 the experience that they've, they've encountered. Okay. So a big, a big way to kind of build trust is to lead with generosity. So give as much as possible. And obviously there's only so much that we can give. And when I say give, it doesn't have to be dollars. It can totally be in uh, just value, right? Finding opportunities to provide value to your customers uh, or clients, whatever you want to call them, all right? Um, giving value is going to be stuff like this. Like I'm create, I, you know, I, I do my meetups. I do these educational videos, like just to provide value. My goal is that, you know, you're able to learn something from this. You realize through our conversation or through this video that, Hey, I'm a, I'm a commercial real estate agent. You, um, my hope is that, you know, if someone talks about commercial real estate. You may think, Oh yeah, Gus does commercial real estate. Let me give him a call or let me go ahead and give you his number. He could probably help you out. So, you know, Try to give as much as you can, right? Um, you know, and, and that could be, like I said, any, any number of ways. So uh, just lead with generosity. Try to, try to give value first before you ask for a close, okay? 
Now, refining your content marketing is um, kind of a big one now more than ever. Um, content marketing has really, like it was already on, on the rise. Content marketing was already sort of dominating the marketing hemisphere. And I think it's, it's essentially, I think COVID is, has essentially uh, added fuel to that flame. Because um, more people are online, they have more time online, they're spending more time watching videos and listening to podcasts and all that good stuff. If you can refine your content marketing, that is uh, going to provide um, a essentially like it's like fishing, right? You you essentially are setting up little delicious morsels for people to be able to gobble up and they will come back to you. So instead of you going out to them, this is a really great sort of fishing expedition to get them to come back to you because you've provided some value for them that they like a good takeaway for them to, to, to go with. Um, a good example of that is um, the, uh, the bridal shop that's in downtown Claremont. Let me, let me see if I can remember, I don't remember the name, let's see if I'll look it, look it up really quickly. Um, but the bridal shop in downtown um, in downtown Claremont, they they she does a really good job. I, oh, her the the name of the company is called Gray Collective Bridal Boutique. If you look her up on Instagram, I, I don't really know her, but I I do follow her, and um, she does a really good job of uh, of of creating content on Instagram, and this ties into the uh, shifting to and including a digital experience, right? So. What she does is she has a bridal shop and every time she has a new line or maybe there's some new product or something like, I'm not exactly sure how she, she does it uh, or what her timing is, but it's pretty often, it's pretty regular. She essentially does like a digital showcase where she showcases the, uh, the new stuff that's in and explains like the material that it's made of and how it feels and just kind of like walking. It's probably something that she would do if someone were to walk into her shop, but she's doing it virtually. Now, obviously it's not as high touch as someone walking into the space, but it allows the, the, the customer to be able to ex uh, essentially have an experience through, you know, with her in her store without actually physically being there. So um, she does this on a regular basis. She stays pretty consistent with it. Um, I think it's a really ex excellent use of essentially creating a digital experience uh, for customers so they can feel like, oh, okay, I don't have to leave my home. I can actually go here. And if I like it, or if, if I'm looking for my, for my, you know, for my friend or something, I can just send her a link and she can experience the same kind of thing. So it's a, it's a really good use of sort of com combining content marketing element and sort of a digital experience, which is, which is really awesome. And, and of course, I'm sure she engages with people who ask questions and all that other good stuff, which engagement is a whole other, that's like next level, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, social media, I, I don't want to say marketing per se, but I, I guess social, social, I guess social media marketing to some degree, uh, organically, right? So um, now we're the, the the next thing that I, I think is going to be really important is uh, I talked earlier about a CRM. So a CRM can obviously manage your leads, um, but that's not all CRMs are doing now. CRMs have uh, the ability now to. Uh, uh, create automation with um, with email and text message, um, obviously not phone calls. I guess some may be able to do phone calls, but they would be like, you know, I guess robotics or some robotic calls or something, robocallers. I don't know if those are legal anymore. But anyways, most of them do at least email. Uh, some of them also do text message. So here's, here's this. If you're dealing with, I don't know, a thousand people a week, for example, um, obviously, that's a lot of people to try to email and text message on a regular basis. I mean, that could be very difficult. But if you can collect their email address and a phone number, and you can put them into a CRM that is already able to, you know, send uh, emails, automated emails and automated text messages, you can actually create a what's like a funnel, right, that essentially sends those people some kind of content. And why that's amazing is because it, if you create the actual emails appropriately, I do a mix of emails that are uh, super like designed so that they look sort of like really clean and, and like design like a, maybe like a newsletter, I guess you can say. And then I do other emails that are also automated, but they look like they're personal emails for me, okay? And I do the mix because 
you know, when you when you receive sort of like a, a super clean over design, like really super designed email, you kind of get the feel that it's sort of a general email that's going to a bunch of people. And there's just there, there could probably be some good tidbits for it, but it's not necessarily directly for me. It's so much as it's something that I may have an interest in, but it's not it's not a hey, Gus, right? However, on on these emails, I can also create them to look like they're coming for me. So it's just all it says when it sends, it sends the email is like, hey, Gus, uh, I was just, you know, thinking about you and your process. Uh, I wanted to share this article that I found that I thought might be relevant for you. Uh, please go ahead and check it out. Let me know if you have any thoughts on it. Right. And then that's it. And that's all the email has. So that's sort of like a, a, an email that looks like I was on my I was looking online and I thought about this this person this client and i decided to send them an article so um you know people like that they like to feel like they are being personally touched and for all intents and purposes no one can tell whether i'm sending the email directly or if it's part of my automation and that's on purpose right i, I don't want them to know that um, but that's a good tactic to use when you utilizing automation where you have sort of a really super clean version and then you have some other email that's more like it seems like it's just a personal email that you took five minutes to put together. So uh, email uh, marketing automation and text marketing automation, those things, I mean, you can essentially uh, by having that in place and creating those those pipeline, those those. Uh, those uh, funnels, I don't, I guess you can say um, uh, that uh, a drip campaign, right? For all of those people, it allows you to engage with thousands of people at the same time without actually having to engage with thousands of people at the same time, because you still have a business that you need to run. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it's not a good idea to actually make a phone call or actually send the real text message to somebody. I think those things are very valuable. I use a combination of all of those things, but every business is going to be slightly different and you may be able to do it with your business, but, you know, there may be another business out there where it's just, you're, you're doing way too much volume and making individual phone calls just doesn't make any sense. So you got to figure out what's going to work best for you. But leveraging marketing uh, automation, I mean, that will allow you to scale on the level that you would not even be able to imagine. You wouldn't be able to fathom uh, uh, how many people you can essentially uh, engage with without having to do that much work um, on the back end. Now you do have to do some work on the front end by creating those content pieces. How, you know, the number of emails, you got to create all the emails, whatever text messages, you got to create those. So there's a whole other thing that you can focus on and we can talk about that, but not now, um, that you can do to help you with, you know, really create a really good drip campaign for that. So I highly recommend, um, if, especially if you're doing higher volume, that you, you, you leverage uh, marketing automation. I use that as part of my marketing uh, uh, tool set, uh, and it's been it's worked miracles. I, I I get emails, random emails all the time, random text messages all the time that are coming back to me from automated emails or text messages that are saying, "Hey, you know, I, I want to start looking for something," or you know, "I got your email. I have questions, right?" And now I have an opportunity to engage. So. Solidifying your digital footprint kind of ties into the earlier elements that we talked about with regard to content marketing and, and the digital experience. Um, so putting a having your digital having your digital footprint, this this is essentially like um, this is more along the lines of making sure that you have a website that really speaks to what it is that you do and what you represent. Um, having a uh, a website now more than ever. I think websites were starting to like weaken a bit because people were doing a lot of landing pages and, you know, social was becoming really strong. But I think with COVID, websites are now kind of coming back as a um, sort of a mainstay. It's becoming the brick and mortar for your for, for businesses now. Like it's replacing the sort of brick and mortar stance that, oh, if you don't have a website, then you're not a legitimate company, that kind of thing, right? So I would highly recommend if you can to really make sure that you put together a, you know, a nice, clean, good, a good website that's easy to use, easy to navigate. I would hire someone to put that together, especially if you're not highly tech savvy. Um, you know, websites now are, you know, they're easy to do, but they're, you know, they're 
they're they're relatively easy to put together, but they're very easy to mess up, and they're they can easily be hacked. And I mean, there's all kinds of problems that can come with you managing your own website. And I would not recommend it if you can afford to um, you know to have it. I, I think it's worth the money personally. Um, so definitely you know make sure that you optimize your website and you create a website that, you know, has good content for your content marketing, has a really good digital experience for the digital side, whether that's you sending people to your digital experience or it's on the website itself. Um, and then make sure that, you know, it's, it's, it's built in a way that's very clear about, you know, what it is that you do and, and who it is that you service. So um, I guess the last element, well, not really the last element, but I would say that the next element that I think is uh, important for you to understand is just understanding what digital marketing um, options that you have. Um, you know, a lot of marketing and advertisements are, are really leaning towards the digital side um, just because everyone's online. So um, I will say that don't, don't just chase after the new shiny thing. Um, you know, a lot of people swear by Facebook and Facebook is great for a lot of businesses, but it's not that great for every single business. There are some businesses that it's not amazing for. There are some businesses that it's really good for, but the time frame for, you know, leveraging uh, those, those ads may be very long. And, and a great example of that is I work with a team. Um, I, I handle the commercial side of real estate, but my team handles the residential side of real estate. And what you know, what they've been doing is, uh, you know, they for the last almost a year, we've been doing Facebook ads for residential homes. Now, um, you know, understanding like the expectation for whatever it is that you're doing, and that that goes with any of these elements that that we're kind of talking about today, like understand like when can you expect to see a return on any of these activities like try to under try to figure out what kind of return you can get on doing any of these things some of them are going to be super long tail some of them are going to be more immediate um in our case i'm going to talk about facebook um the the marketing team went ahead and 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 focused on putting facebook ads together and when we sat down and identified what the the time frame for 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 conversion is going to be on these Facebook ads. We came to realize that that conversion is going to be anywhere from nine to twelve months. Well, that's a good important thing to understand because if you don't know that, right, you might say, "Well, you know what? I'm going to spend three months on on Facebook, and I'm going to give it about six months before I decide whether or not this is going to be worth my time." So the challenge there is that if I, because if I go in there blindly and I give it a good six months, which feels like a, a decent amount of time for, for marketing ads, right? For typically for ads, ads seem, tend to be a little bit faster, right? It's not like, it's not like social, like organic social tends to take a long time, but advertising usually is a little bit more immediate. Well, not with Facebook ads for people purchasing homes, right? So those ads took, took about nine to 12 months before they started turning into anything. Well, if we would have just done the six months and then stopped everything, right? Then it wouldn't have been for another three months before we started seeing a return, you know, starting to see a return. And then here we are, we've lost six months or more of time that we could have been advertising and marketing on Facebook because nine months later, we're, we're seeing the fruits of all of that activity. So, you know, I, I want, you know, it's, it's important to understand the expectation for time frame so that, you know, when you're going to experiment with something, you know, you have a good idea, a good ballpark of when you can expect to see that return. So obviously there's Facebook, there's Google, there's YouTube. Those are sort of the three big ones, but obviously you can, you can advertise on just about any platform. There are apps you can advertise on. You can advertise on uh, podcasts. Um, specific podcast that might be for specific types of people. Um, that's a really good one. I, I, I think that's a that's a good one to, to go after. If you find if you find that there is a a podcaster that is talking to the same people that you would either do business with, you know, uh, you provide a service for or sell widgets to, then um, I, I would I would say that podcast is probably a really good place for you to to engage with because they're gonna the podcasts usually are very specific with the type of people that are listening to them. So that that if, if you can figure out what podcast 
podcast uh, might work for you and they have a big enough following, you may be able to get a pretty good um, deal to, you know, essentially be a sponsor on the podcast. And then now you have a little bit of a voice, um, you know, for the, your service or, or the widget that you sell on that podcast to all the people who listen to them. So um, there's a, there's a number of different ways that you can go with that. Just make sure that you explore um, all the different avenues and that you talk to someone who specializes in digital marketing in the digital marketing space. And honestly, there are even specialists within, so like, for example, there are specialists that focus only on Google ads and they don't do anything else but Google ads. Those guys probably can do the best, most algorithmic Google ads that you're going to be able to find. So, you know, I, I, you know, working with a digital marketing specialist to kind of get an idea of which avenues you should go with. And then, you know, maybe identifying some specific specialists that you might want to work with. Those are kind of things that you're going to want to explore. So just understand what your options are and then have a good expectations on what kind of return you can see on that. All right. So the last three things I want to talk about, these are probably the things that I utilize the most. Um, I, I left these to be a little bit uh, separated because, you know, these are, I do kind of touch on all the other ones, but I think these are sort of my bread and butter for all the business that, that I generate. So uh, one is network marketing. So this includes any kind of chamber of commerce or like a BNI group, for example, any kind of civic groups or associations. Those are going to be those kinds of networks where, you know, you meet on a regular basis. Um, you know, you guys uh, talk about your business in some capacity. Sometimes there'll be presentations of some kind, there'll be learning opportunities that are usually coming from other business owners that are within that group. So, you know, network, network marketing is, is a really, is a powerful one. Um, remember that it's not just about going to the networking events. Make sure that, you know, when you go to these networking events, if you see that there may be a, uh, a way for you to either help someone else out, or maybe you can, you know, there's some, there, there may be some, uh, um, synergy with another business owner, call them up and, and say, Hey, listen, good to meet you. You know, let's meet for coffee. I, I'd like to learn more about your business and see how we might be able to help each other. So, you know, it's not just about showing up to those networking events. It's about also connecting with them above and beyond, you know, those events to see how you guys can really help each other out. Um, Value-based marketing. This is a, this is actually a, a good one. This gets into if you're going to do a podcast or like video tutorials or how to's, or maybe they're just informational um, or these kinds of videos, right? Where it's just ed edu well, th this wasn't meant to be a video, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, so events like an educational event. So I had an ed educational event that dealt with the, you know, lead generating machine. That was sort of the, the, the premise of the event. And, you know, the idea was I wasn't there selling that I'm, you know, hey, who's looking to buy or sell real estate in the commercial space. I was just there to share the knowledge that I had. I, I asked Kate to share the knowledge that she had. And then there were some other people that were in there during the mastermind portion that they were able to share some really great information as well. So it was really, I felt it was really valuable for me because I learned some things and it seemed like the people who attended also learned a few things. So um, if you ever get an opportunity to do some kind of event like that, to me, I think it's, it's been very valuable for me. I, I get a chance to say hello and introduce myself to new people and also provide value for, for other folks. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can provide value. Um, that would include doing, including value ads in your mar in your email marketing or text messages or whatever, but just finding, finding elements of value and sharing those freely with your, uh, with your market. The last is the referral marketing. And this is kind of the, the this kind of touches on what I do with both network and value-based marketing is, you know, I try to find ways to help as many of my um, uh, business associates as I can. If I, if I see that there's an opportunity for me to help, I try to connect with them and say, hey, listen, how can I help you in your business? What can I do? What are you looking to do? What do you, how do you see your business growing in the next few years? So on and so forth and see what I can do to add value to their business. And um, you know, sometimes that's throwing them a, a referral, like, hey, here's, here's some business. Sometimes that's connecting them with someone that can help them grow their business, right? Um, so, uh, or just maybe a, connecting them with a partner that might help them with their business or something like that. So why uh, that has value for me and the way that I do it is that, you know, obviously it, it's one of those situations where if, if I, if I help 
help out people, then um, reciprocity usually kind of takes takes over, and people feel like, oh, well, I appreciate the help. You know what? I, let me help Gus whenever I can. If I if there's an opportunity for me to help Gus, I'll, I'll help him because he's he's been very helpful for me. So um, it, it's it's a really a really good way to to I guess it's it, it is a long that's a long I guess. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a long tail activity. It's not going to something you're going to get immediately, but by helping others, you ultimately will receive that in return. At least I've seen that. So if you have the ability to help other businesses, go for it. Now, there's some other ways that you can do it as well. And I, I wrote them down here, which are like offering free or discount offers. Um, a great business that uh, really blew up like this is Dropbox. If you guys are uh, may, may already be familiar with this, but Dropbox built their entire business on referral business. So, um, and they, I believe they still have it. Where you know, if you get, if you get Dropbox and you refer someone else to Dropbox and they sign up, you get a free month. So I could refer 12 people and get a whole year for free, right? So they built their entire business on that model, like almost entirely on that model. And uh, it, it's a model that works because people like that incentive. It doesn't. Um, cost Dropbox um, directly. It does cost them indirectly because they, they, they kind of lose that short-term revenue, but they've gained a customer. So they the cost of that customer is now, let's say $25 monthly rate, right? But now that customer that they got is paying $25 a month for who knows how long, right? And as long as they provide good service, then they're good to go, right? So um that that model that model works re works really well if you can figure out a way to implement that type of model into your business you, you you'll probably see some su success there because you're having other people essentially uh doing the work of finding finding clients on your behalf uh another one is uh upgrading service so let's say you have some kind of a service or something that you offer and it's let's say a monthly service so maybe you get an upgrade so if i if i refer business uh to you and you offer let's say you're your pool cleaning service or something like that, and you don't normally scrub my pool. Well, if uh, I refer, you know, you business, maybe you're like, oh, well, you get a free upgrade for next month. Uh, we're going to do a full workout of your entire pool. We're going to clean it. We're going to go ahead and and check your filters, which we might not normally do. You know, we're going from your from the base to the premium package for next month for that referral. Right. So that may be a, a good way for you to get people to refer business because I might be like, oh, well, I, man, I, I, I'm, I need to get my pool clean I, and I don't want to have to pay for it. You know what? Let me see if I know someone who needs a pool guy and I'll, I'll refer them. Um, other things obviously are going to be the basic, you know, offering gifts or even accolades. Accolades are actually pretty powerful things. So, um, you know, if you uh, if you have a podcast or a YouTube video or or even on your social media uh, profile, if someone's given you multiple, let's say five referrals uh, for business, then you know maybe you give them a shout out and you tell people on your social media platform to hey go follow at Ortiz was taken on Instagram and on Facebook, right? You're gonna, you know, you, you're gonna love their channel. They, they, you know, they, they refer some great business to me. I, I really appreciate them. So, you know, even accolades, you don't necessarily have to give anything away, but even doing something as simple as, as offering accolades and, and getting people to follow them, uh, that's also something that you can do as well. So um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, you know, obviously this, this whole section was supposed to be, this was live. So, you know, we actually did, a um, you know a discussion uh, where we kind of did a mastermind and talked about other people's input and ideas and and stuff like that and, and we really we really got some good stuff there. Um, I, I wish I would have um, I guess taken notes, but I was busy actually in the midst of you know discussion, so it was difficult for me to actually take notes on it. But um, I will say that we're, like I said, we're going to we're going to keep working to try to make this both in person and live so that you can engage. Um, in a live, in a Facebook live uh, scenario. But um, if you can make it, uh, we'd love to see you. So anyways, uh, I don't wanna get too much. I know I've kind of talked a lot as it is. So uh, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you like what you're seeing, please make sure you like and share and um, you know, put any comments below and just let me know what you think. If you have any other things that you wanna add or disagree with some of the things that I've suggested, I'd love to hear about it. 
Um, you know, I, I, I am by no means the most knowledgeable person in, you know, in all of these things. I just, I have my experiences. I know some of the things that are in here. And if you have some better knowledge, I am totally open to that. So I, I appreciate you guys watching and I thank you so much for your time. Hopefully I will see you at my next in-person event. And until next time, peace.